Um, I left the vocabulary list there, and in, here it says to uh, use the vocabulary words to complete the following statements. So uh, in an effort to make this uh, a little bit nicer here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the real numbers are, uh, I'm going to denote that with an R. The rational numbers, I'm going to denote that with a Q. Irrational numbers, I am going to denote that with an I. Integers, I'm going to denote that with a Z. Whole numbers, I'm going to denote that with a W. And the natural numbers, I'm going to denote that with an N. All right. And let's see a Q. It makes that a little bit nicer there. Okay, so what are the numbers that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers? The decimal form either terminates or repeats. Well, here, look at the word here. It says ratio. Another word for ratio, oh, rational. I take the NAL away and we're left with ratio. That's another word for that is a fraction. So here we have the rational. What are the numbers used for counting? One, two, three, yada, yada, yada. That would be the natural numbers. Big N right there for natural numbers. What are the set of numbers which represent all points on a number line? Uh, every point along the number line would be all the integers. Let me let that go with a Z here. And what are the numbers that cannot be expressed as a ratio? They cannot, here emphasis on the cannot be expressed as a ratio, that would be irrational. So I'm going to give that the I. What are the counting numbers plus zero? So zero, one, two, three. That would be all the whole numbers. We have the whole numbers. And what are the whole numbers and their opposites? That would be all of the integers. Oh, wait. I must have messed something up. Oh, hang on. All points on a number line, not necessarily all the spots on a number line, so that must be all of the real numbers. All right. Now here we have a diagram to show uh, what the subsets are and what goes into what. So um, starting with the big outside, everything here, these are all real numbers. So here's all of our real numbers. And again, everything in here is going to be a real number. And now we separate it into two main categories. It can be either rational or irrational. And again, with the rational numbers, uh, that would be something like one half or. 4.2. Those are rational numbers. Something we can make sense of. An irrational number would be something like pi or the square root of 3. Something a little weird like that that would never terminate. It, never, uh, it's a, it is a decimal that's never ending and never repeating. All right, inside the rational numbers, we then have all of our integers. So like negative 17 or 12 would be another example. And inside of the integers, we have all of the whole numbers, which is 0, 1, and 2. And inside the whole numbers, we have all of the natural numbers, 1, 2, all the counting numbers. Easy. Now we want to take a look at some of the properties of the real numbers. How do they interact with each other? Well, well, we have the commutative property of addition, uh, which is saying like 
2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2, which is 5, we knew that. And the commutative property of multiplication, well, that's saying 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. And now we have the associative property of addition. That's uh, it's like saying 2 plus 3, and we're going to associate those, add 1 to it. It's the same thing as saying 2 plus 3 plus 1. Now notice my order didn't change, but what I associate did. Here the 2 and 3 were associated first, so it would be 5 plus 1 to get 6. Over here we have the 3 and 1 that are associated, so we get 4 plus 2 give us 6. The same thing goes with multiplication. If I have 2 times 3, and that is being multiplied by 4, it's the same thing as saying 2 times 3 times whether we do the 2 times 3 first or the 3 times 4 first, it's still going to give us the same answer. Now the identity property of addition, now this is, a, I like to think of the identity properties as the do-nothing properties. So something like 4 plus 0 would give us 4. I mean, we essentially, we added nothing, which is doing nothing. And for multiplication, we'd be saying like 4 times 1 is 4 because we really did nothing here. Now the inverse property, now this, I'll put a little star here, this handles subtraction and division. So the inverse property is saying that there's always a number, and when we add them together with the original number, we'll end up with zero. So three plus its inverse, which is negative three, gives us zero. Right, we ended up with the identity element. The identity element for addition is zero. The identity element for multiplication is one. So four times one fourth would give us one. So here's our inverse uh, property of multiplication. Now closure, what it's saying is that no matter what two numbers that I add together, I'll still end up with a real number. So 4 plus 9, that's still going to be a real number. So this tells me we end up with 13. So regardless of what two numbers I add together, as long as those two numbers are real numbers, I'll end up with a real number. The same thing goes for multiplication. Regardless of what I multiply, when I multiply 4 times 9, you know, we get 36. Yeah, 4 is real, 9 is real, and the product of that is also have to be real. So that tells us our closure property. Now the distributive property, we've already been over this. This, I'm going to do is A times B plus C, and we get A, B plus A, C. So I have 5 times 4 times 13. Yeah, so this is the associative property. Associative property of multiplication. Okay, here. What happened to the 2? Well, the 2 was distributed to both the x and the 3, so this is our distribution property. All right, now it wants us to add, uh, find the additive and multiplicative inverses of these numbers. The additive inverse, what do I need to add to this number to get to 0? I need to add 5.8, or excuse me, 5 eighths. And to find the multiplicative inverse, the multiplicative inverse, now this is where I multiply this statement, I should end up with 1. Well, if I find the reciprocal, the reciprocal is whenever I flip the fraction, keep my sign, and this would give me the multiplicative inverse. 
Now before I can find the additive and multiplicative inverse of this, well the additive inverse of this one would be pretty simple. Right? We just take the negative, the opposite of it, right? So the additive would be negative two and one half. Now for the multiplicative I need to change this from a mixed fraction into an improper fraction so that I could just find the reciprocal. Well the improper fraction, well two how many halves do I have in two dollars? Well I'd have four fifty cent pieces, right? So I know that two times two is four and then I add the one, so I'll end up with five halves. Right, so this is really the same as five halves. So the multiplicative inverse of five halves is two fifths. And we want to put a little box around our answers here.